That that was a wild baseball game. Mariners win 10 to 6 to improve to 20 and 16 on the season in the even the four game series with the Minnesota Twins at a game apiece. Let's go over the scoring plays. This one might take a while. Mitch Hanniger gets the Mariners on the board with a homer to left center. That makes it 1 0. Dylan Moore doubles home Luis Urias. That makes it 2 0. Third inning, things do not go well. Emerson Hancock gives up a RBI single to Trevor Larnick that scores Jose Miranda. And Ryan Jeffers smokes a home run in the third inning. That makes it 4 2. No scoring until the seventh inning when Cal, you know what, rally. Comes off the bench to hit a grand slam that scores Mitch Garver, scores Arias, scores more. It gives the Mariners a 6-4 lead. But seventh inning, I almost said Buck Farmer. Kyle Farmer doubles to Stenner to score Miranda. That makes it 6-5. In the eighth inning, some controversy for sure. Austin Martin reaches on an infield single. Taylor Sassetto gets hurt on the play, and Max Kepler is able to score. We will talk about that play for sure. Ties the game at 6-6. Mariners go ham in the ninth inning. Josh Rojas singles to set for Dylan Moore. Mitch Haniger hits a sacrifice fly to score Cal Rally, 8-6. Josh Rojas scores on a wild pitch, 9-6. And Ty France singles home Julio Rodriguez, 10-6. Mariners get the job done in the bottom of the ninth. Let's just think Simply Seattle now because we've got a lot to talk about tonight. Simply Seattle has the very best in Seattle sports gear. Awesome stuff for the Mariners, of course, but the Kraken, Huskies, Storm, Sounders, Cougars, you can find it all at simplyseattle.com. Once you find everything you're looking for, please use code MOLLYWAP15. It takes 15% off your order. It's a great deal that shows you're paying attention. You just type it in at checkout, M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5. Thank you so much for supporting us, Simply Seattle. Thank you for supporting Simply Seattle, and thank you for supporting the show by entering that code link in the description to make it nice and easy watch this video click that link buy a bunch of cool stuff simply seattle.com okay the negatives from this game um emerson hancock was not very good emerson hancock has now struggled in back-to-back -back starts uh, he goes four innings and he gives up four runs now you can say hey he only gave up runs in one inning you could tell that Emerson Hancock was not fooling the Minnesota Twins whatsoever in those three scoreless frames. And I don't know, it's not worth putting uh, these things up. Quotation marks, that's what they're called. Because um, they, they didn't score. But he wasn't effective. It was not an effective outing. And, you know, if you're Brian Wu watching this and wondering if you have a spot in the rotation you're probably feeling pretty good. Now, Wu is going to make a start at some point next week. They announced that. Uh, he hasn't announced when. They're going to give all the starters a break. Uh, a break. I think I just tried to say rest and break at the same time. A rake. They're going to give them all a rake. They're going to go rake the mound, and whoever gets done first gets to stay in the rotation. A crazy person. Um, but I imagine if Wu pitches well, Hancock will be sent down to AAA. And again, I think Hancock has to stay on rotation. As much as I'd like to see him in this bullpen, I think you have to have him as a starter unless you make a move for another type starter type. No, I, Dallas Keuchel is not the answer. Dallas Keuchel is absolutely not the answer. Dallas Keuchel is not good enough to say, well, we can put Emerson Hancock in the bullpen now. Because we have Dallas Keuchel in case there's an injury. No. Emerson Hancock needs to stay stretched out. Unless they make another type of move, I think that has to happen. So anyway, he wasn't effective. Um, Tyson Miller in a high leverage situation was not my favorite thing I saw. They really didn't have a choice, I guess, because they go to Gabe Spire pretty darn early. And by the way, <laughs> I was wondering why Taylor Sassetto was pitching in the situation he was, and it's because I forgot that Gabe Spire pitched in the fifth. Slowly, but surely, losing my mind. Um, so you go to Spire early, and I get it, like especially when you're trailing in the game, kind of a bridge guy to the minus relievers, you know, because you use Austin Voth after that. But you bring in Miller... 
And he wasn't very good. He gives up a couple of hits. He gives up a run. You know, he throws 12 of 13 pitches for strikes, but caught way too much of the zone. Um, all right. Uh, Stanek gets the job done, but did give up a little bit of a liner there that scared the you-know-what out of me. Um, let's talk about the Taylor Sassetto thing. First of all, most importantly, Taylor Sassetto, I hope you're okay. I really hope you're okay. Unfortunately, I have my doubts because that looked ugly. For those who didn't see it, ground ball to first base, fairly deep in the hole. Ty France makes the play, or fields it cleanly, makes the throw to first base. Unfortunately, Sassetto doesn't get there in time and then trips over the bag, and it's a non-contact injury, as far as I could tell anyway, unless you count the bases contact, but he wasn't like rammed into his Achilles or anything like that. It did look like an Achilles injury to me, but I am. <laughs> to say I'm not a doctor is the understatement of understatements, but it didn't look good. Now let's talk about what happens on that play. It's a single, the runner advances to third, and then the runner ends up scoring while Hanniger is writhing, in, not Hanniger, excuse me, while Sacedo is writhing in pain. I don't know why I said Hanniger. The runner scores. I saw a lot of people on Twitter suggest that the play should have been whistled dead. Well, they don't have whistles in baseball, but should have been called dead. I respectfully disagree. The runner at third had taken a little bit of a lead. And you just, you can't blow plays like that dead. Too much can happen in baseball. It's unfortunate that somebody wasn't screaming timeout. As far as I know. And the fact that nobody for the Seattle Mariners was absolutely running on the field and screaming and like saying, what the hell, what the heck, excuse me. Sorry, Pioneer Middle School, elementary school. I'm telling you, something's off. Because no, I, Scott Service, even though he's not the most, he's not Lupinella. But we've seen Scott Service lose his cool. I think the fact that, and this is a little bit of a logical fallacy, but the fact you didn't see the Mariners going crazy about that play kind of tells you that that's just the way it works. Now, ideally, somebody gets hurt like that, I would love the play to just be dead. Runners stick where they are. Now, that would have cost the Mariners really badly in a playoff game once. Let's not forget about that. But unfortunately, I think it was the right call. And it doesn't matter because... The most important takeaway is I really hope Taylor says it was okay. Not just because I try to be a good human and I don't like people being hurt. It'd be a significant loss for this bullpen. Significant. For a bullpen that I already have question marks about. I think we all have a little bit of question mark about. I really hope he's okay. Because the depth on this bullpen to say it's being tested right now. Oh, boy, is that an understatement. Really hope you're okay, Taylor. But just to get it out of the way, I did agree with the play resuming. It stinks, but I do agree with it. All right, those are the negatives. There are some real positives. Uh, the bullpen outside of Miller and, unfortunately, Sassetto, who didn't look particularly great before the injury, Pitched really well. Gabe Spire gets the job done. Austin Voth really got the job done. And those middle innings keeping you in the ball game, that's important. And Andre Munoz, you know, ideally he wouldn't have had to pitch in this game. I never have a problem when you get your closer hot using him. Now, if a couple of guys would have gotten on or if the pitch count would have started going up, not a big deal to pull him either. But really nice job by him he's looked looked the part as of late that era is down to 1.88 and while we are known for criticizing reliever era as a stat it's nice to see the results have been there for the most part for munoz um 
Offensively, a lot of really good games today. Josh Rojas with a couple of hits. Julio gets on three times. Great to see a couple of walks there. Hits the line drive single in the ninth to keep that inning. You know, there was only one out, but keep it going. Um, the only batter who really had a real terrible, well, there's two. Uh, Jorge Polanco had a rough one. And Sebi Zavala stinks. But other than that, the offense had a pretty good game. If I'm being completely honest with you, I was ready if this would have been a loss to rail on Ty France pretty hard again because his first three at-bats were terrible. But he does get a big, big RBI to extend the lead to four. The offense was good tonight. In particular, you got some big nights from some big players. Mitch Hanniger's homer was absolutely destroyed. Destroyed. And then his sack fly was big. Drives that ball into right field. Great to see. You know, only the one hit, but this was the best I've seen Handiger look offensively in a good while. I was encouraged by what I saw from Handiger. I was definitely uh, encouraged by what I saw from Julio with the pair of walks, especially. Uh, and then that line drive single. Um, Dylan Moore, really nice offensive game. Reaches three times. I'm... What? Big flipping dumper. And I know it doesn't end up being the go-ahead hit. I mean, it was the go-ahead hit, but not the one that ultimately leads to the victory. But that Grand Slam... I just... I would do anything if I was the Seattle Mariners within legal reason to make sure he never played for another team. He's just a special player. No, you look at 213, 306, 463, and that does not scream special. But you're missing the point if you just look at those numbers. You know, and uh, 463 slugging percentage is really good. Nine homers is really good. 20 RBI through 36 games, while is based on things that are out of big dumpers control a little bit, it's still nice to see. They still are hits that bring in runs. It's it's one of those, you just don't get it unless you're watching this guy every day. And even when he was scuffling, and he was scuffling over the last week plus, there was still an air of confidence, you know, that it it never really looked like he was bothered by it, but he wasn't bothered by it to the point where it was letting him affect him. It was just the results weren't there. That's the takeaway I got anyway. I, I'm just a massive fan of this guy. I think I've made that abundantly clear over these. By the way, we are approaching, this is recap number 198. Thursday's recap will be number 200. That's crazy. I, it's crazy to me anyway. And I really appreciate everyone who's been there from the beginning. I appreciate everyone who's just getting here now. I appreciate everyone who got there, decided this is not for them, and decided not to watch ever again. I still appreciate it. I, I just don't know if you can say enough about Big Dumper. The amount of massive hits that this guy's had in such a relatively short period of time. He's special, man. He's special. This was a fun win, and it's great to see double-digit runs. Double-digit runs, and you know, it certainly helped that Minnesota was down some pitchers tonight, especially in the bullpen. But you know, they faced some good guys. Alcala is far from a slouch. Uh, Cole Sands is far from a slouch. Okert is fall from, far from a slouch. Jay Jackson's not great. But, you know, they put together quality at-bats for a lot of this game, especially the late innings. But this was nice to see, and a wonderful bounce back from a very frustrating offensive game last night. 
You know, 11 strikeouts, still too many. Still too many. None for Julio, by the way. Um, But you draw five walks with him, and you get 10 hits. You reach 15 times, and you score 10 runs. That is what we are looking for. That is what you want to see from a team that should be competing for a American League and then World Series title. That's the ultimate goal. And if you play like you did offensively tonight, you can do that. Can they do that over a large sample size? I don't know. I don't know. But it's nice to see at least that it's possible to do it in the first place. This was going to be a bummer of a loss. But they didn't let that happen. That ninth inning was magical, maybe too strong of a word, but pretty close. And then that grand slam from Cal Rally. By the way, <laughs> to say it was a no-doubter, we've got to start doubting Cal Rally's power from the right side, if anyone had any doubts. That dude is strong. Strong, strong, strong. Loved it. What do we got tomorrow? Oh, yeah. We've got Kirby against Paddock. Vantage Mariners. Advantage Mariners almost every time that George Kirby pitches. By the way, I'm seeing now that ESPN is not listing a start starter for Sunday. So I would guess that's where we see Brian Wu against Oakland. So he'll have to wait a little bit to face a major league team. Sorry, you had to see that fat old arm there for a second. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. Give me your thoughts on this one. This was a wacky one, wasn't it? But I loved it. I loved it, and I really appreciate the support. And uh, you get a chance to at least split this series now. You I mean, you would have had a chance even with the loss with a couple of wins, but now you got a chance to win two in a row and take the series or just win one or two and a split in Minnesota. That's just fine. Wacky, wacky game. 